Today we're going to review the 12 candle system. We're going to look at some of the best trade setups for the week. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, just reminding uh, everybody this Thursday, August 6th, 1930 Australian Eastern Standard Time, I guess that's 9.30 GMT. Myself and Peter Anderson will join Chris Weston from Pepperstone. We'll be going through some different aspects of how we each individually trade and approach the markets. Peter does a large majority of his trading with the EAs and been trading for many, many years. Very successful. I'm looking forward to listening to what Peter has to say. And you can just click on the link below in the description box to book your spot for the webinar. Uh, probably be about an hour long. I think it's going to be a fantastic night, a great opportunity to learn. Uh, myself, I'm looking forward to learning from Peter. I know he's going to be uh, probably able to provide a lot of very useful information. He's been trading for many years in currency markets as well as other markets. So that's this Thursday, and you can book your spot in the link below. Look forward to seeing you there. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. We had some absolutely huge moves this week on the markets, British pound crosses especially. A lot of the other pairs also had large moves. Today we're gonna review the 12 candle system. Step by step, we're gonna look at some of the best trade setups for the week. I'm gonna talk about why this process is so important to me in terms of duplicating that strategy every single day and we're going to talk about profit taking and some of the questions and emails that I received also in regards to missing out on trades, not squeezing as much out of a, a potential winning trade, and just little things that will help traders improve each and every day. Trading is a never ending journey of constant learning. You're never ever going to reach the holy grail of trading perfection. The odd time you're going to do everything right. The market may not give you what you'd hope to receive, but you may do everything not quite right and get more than what you expect on some trades. But today we're going to just talk about the 12 candle system, working backwards, deconstructing the best trade setups, and why, it's imp why I use the time of day most importantly in specific candle pattern formations to help me identify potentially either buying low or selling high, having a 1 ATR stop and then determining if I'm shooting for 50 pips or more or when to exit that trade if that trade or that profit target has not reached its, its potential. So the first thing we talk about is the 12 candle window. The, that's the window of time that I look for each and every day. I know there are trades sometimes in the rollover. I know there's sometimes there are trades in the three hour windows in between. And yes, I will take those trades if I am there at the screen especially if I've been watching London or how to trade in London and I see the potential trade setting up or to enter into outside of that 12 candle window. There are certain setups, in particular the squeeze or a stop hunt to the high or to the low of the day in that three hour window that engulfs or locks in the peak formation high or low heading into the next session. So again, a three hour window for me is 8 to 11 p.m. for Asia, 2 to 5 a.m. for Lon Europe London, and 8 to 11 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time for the New York session. And in particular, I focus on that equities hour, that middle hour from 9 to 10 p.m. at night, New York Eastern Standard Time for Asia, 3 to 4 a.m. and 9 to 10 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. When the equity markets open, that hour can often be the trap taking traders into the extreme or the reversal point if that market indeed is either locking in the high or the low of the session, especially in London. If Asia has given us a possibly a consolidation and a stop on 25 to 50 pips to lock in a high or a low of the day, especially if it's a high of the week or a low of the week setup, or if Asia has given us a peak formation, we may be in a, in a, a trend move where London will be the middle of that move and then the, and the US session may end up locking in the high or the low of the session. Very important to understand that they will at some point put a high, high of the day in place and a low of the day in place. 
and often in these candle formation patterns in that 12 candle window we'll often see that take place if it takes place outside of that 12 candle window that helps us create a bias for either a continuation in the direction already in place so I've talked about not counter trending the peak formation so if a market locks in the low of the day in Asia with a W formation as we saw a couple good trades this week and that move then I'd be I would already have a bias for heading into the Europe London window to be trading with the trend and we talk about structure I predominantly look at everything as a giant rectangle whether it's a head and shoulders pattern, an ascending triangle, a descending triangle, a double top, double bottom, essentially we're in a high and a low rectangle. I like to look for two and three day patterns where the market is building up order flow or it consolidates in a Friday, Monday, Tuesday or a Monday, Tuesday, large percentage of the time will be the higher or the low of the week and when you can start to identify those trade setups and the direction that the market is potentially moving towards that's when you can target asymmetrical risk reward of maybe 10 times your trade risk in terms of your profit target so structure is very important and that starts for me every single week I look at the Friday Monday the Thursday Friday Monday the Monday Tuesday for that larger geometrical structure because if we get full measured moves we can be targeting two and three hundred pip ranges from maybe a 25 or a 30 pip risk on that trade. And then we talk about the high and the low of the day. Peak formations. So we may already be inside of a previous session's high or low. So Asia may be trading in a 25 pip box and we may be inside of a peak formation high and low from the US session. If the, U if the Asian market breaks that or locks in a peak formation now again we can create a bias for the potential direction of movement because they may have already given us a low of the day and London may continue that move or London may actually Asia may go sideways and they might go down 25 to 50 pips and give us a low of the day trade setup and again very important to understand timings but also the M and W formations that we talked about the type 1 the type 2 the type 3 and then the shortened and extended patterns because when we get into a third hour and they've gone 25 to 50 pips that's when we can start to look for extended W's extended M's we'll often see a big pin formation or an engulfment typically at the higher low of the day we will see pin hammer formations if you go and look at your charts in a large majority of the time it will be a pin to the high or a pin to the low whether it's a second leg or on a one two three locking in that extreme to pull back and go into consolidation or to reverse and go to the other side we've talked about the three things that markets do they break out and they trend they break out and reverse for a false break reversal or they break out and pull back and go into a trading range from top to bottom engulfments and pin hammers that's what will lock in the high or the low so remember when I look at the market in the timings off the low or the high of the day from a previous session from the previous day whatever that may be when I get my candle formation pattern my thesis on that trade setup is that this potentially now is the low of the day I've got a one bar or a one ATR stop I will target geometry to the high of the day maybe a measured move or if we're in a larger geometrical range from a Friday Monday Tuesday Monday Tuesday Wednesday we could be targeting a full expansion of that range if indeed that market breaks through Asia London and New York again identifying if there's already a peak formation in place or if the market has just been trading back and forth in a consolidation asymmetrical risk reward and we've talked I've had a lot of questions regarding stops and different types of stops my, my typical stop loss is going to be 20 to 25 pips sometimes maybe on the pound Aussie pound New Zealand it may be a little bit larger but when that trade thesis is correct and they have locked in the higher the low or right side W or right side M whatever that may be on a squeeze my my stop loss will very rarely if ever get tested even for 20 pips so 
when those trades are right and they've locked it in, they pull away and they usually move away bar after bar fairly quickly. So there's very little heat against those trades. So even though the bar itself may be 30 pips, if you go back and study those charts, I have yet to find one where they've gone back up after locking it in and issuing a pin hammer. Okay, that pin is the last grab back at the trade that's got it right. But very rarely, if ever, do I ever see a stop hunt back into that range, even going any remotely uh, near 20 pips. So, just to reiterate, 25 to 50 pip increments. We talked about this in the last video. From, in the, from a high previous day's high or a previous day's low, when the market pulls back 25 to 50 pips and 75 pips sometimes, the timings are critical because when it gets to that point, we may now be looking at an M or a W structure or, a, or a, an extended stop hunt outside of that London hour or New, or New York opening hour for the third and final tap but 25 to 50 pip increments when the market moves 25 to 50 pips and goes into consolidation start paying attention you're either going to get a continuation which again comes back to our timings and our trend and the pattern of the price action at those levels or we're looking at a consolidation for a reversal we saw a couple of those on friday on the pound the euro markets that have been trending strongly all week they were working the high heading out of the London hour and when they're working the high we're looking for a sell. If they had pulled it back and worked the low or traded down off the high for a continuation that's a different scenario than working the high, working the high, working the high and then locking it in and dropping the market 50 pips. And The last component of that is trade management and self management. I've talked about this stepping out of the way of my my best trade executions usually come when I just put a profit target in and a stop loss and I walk away from the screen. In a lot of majority of cases me being at the screen in the past has actually sabotaged a winning trade, moving my stop too early, going to break even too early, uh, holding on thinking oh this is going to go further and not taking the 50 pips. There's a certain type of scenario that I look for for measured moves and when those markets are going to do a measured move, there's no delay. They'll move quickly, go into consolidation, but that market continues for the measured move, usually with very little in, uh, indication of a reversal back into the trend. So we're going to look at some examples from some of the best trade setups of the week that cover every single part of this criteria. And again, it's important. These are, these are different formations that can evolve together as one complete, you know, one leg, two leg, third leg, or by itself, but usually, typically, we will see a pin hammer locking in the high, maybe of the session in Asia. We might get a pin hammer locking in, in the low in London. Okay, we're going to look at some of the best trading setups from the week, but also just reiterating the, the basic concepts. Focus uh, For me, I focus on the time of day, especially that equities hour, unless the market has already given us an indication of a breakout trend continuation or a stop hunt reversal or they've locked in the higher low of the day we're looking at the pound yen we're looking at the previous week as we head into monday we're inside of friday's range i talk about you know typically to me monday's day one and day one day two day three i'm looking for some kind of consolidation in a large percentage of the weekly cases monday tuesday is the higher low of the week so typically, if I can identify the direction or look at that as we head into the week, that can give me a bias not only for the rest of the week, but also in terms of each trade, the opportunities that may exist. And we saw this on Monday with the pound yen. We saw the market put a peak formation in place in Asia. So again, that middle hour, the equities hour, puts a pin hammer to the high. We have previous session high and low from the US and London sessions. So we have a high of the session in the London and a low of the session in the US. The market puts a peak formation in place in the Asian session for pulling back and then hitting the low again, pulling back, hitting the low again and giving an engulfment pin hammer in that three hour uh, window in between the Asian three hour, can, uh, three hour high low and the Europe London open. Now, 
we've talked about this. We've talked about geometry. We back this up. We can look at the high of the week from the Thursday's high. So we have a high of the week in place. The market pins to the high in Asia, puts a peak formation in for the possible high of the day already in place, but it works the low, pulls back, works the low, pulls back, works the low, pins on the bottom, engulfs, and breaks through. Breaks through. So after working the low, breaks through the smaller geometry that's in place, then consolidates, gives us a pin hammer at the open of the Europe London 12 candle window. One, two, three, four, engulfment, pin hammer at the London open. Now, again, geometry and structure. I look for highs and lows and then how price behaves. We're at the low of the day. We have a pin hammer at the London open in the equities hour. The market has already broken through a smaller ge uh, geometrical pattern, rectangle at the bottom at the low of the day, work the low, work the low, work the low, engulfment, pin hammer, shift, sideways, pin hammer, pin hammer. And then targeting measured moves. So we have two potential ranges here setting up. We have the Thursday, Friday, low, high. So again, day one, day two, day three, we go into a consolidation. The market tightens up on, on Monday, Tuesday, sorry, Friday, Monday. We're in a 50 pip box. The stop hunt is down into the peak formation low, then continues back long. So we have the, the high and low of the day for geometry, and we have the high and low of the larger rectangle as we head into uh, the London session in day one. The market continues to trend, breaking through the high of the day, pin hammer, pulling back, breaking through the high of the week from the previous week, pulling back, and again, one, two, three, four, last candle of the first hour, pin hammer. So we have our equities hour, now one, two, three, stop hunts the high of day, pulls back, consolidates, inside bar, and a continuation of the the existing trend off of the low of the day. Point being, equities hour, pin hammer. End of the first hour as we go into the equities hour, pin hammer. A one, two, three to the high, pulling back. Stop hunting traders who are long already before continuing that move. So in terms of geometry, we have a full expansion met the next day of the previous day's range, but we also potentially now, we'll just remove this one, may have a full expansion of the Thursday, Friday, Monday range being met as well. So this is where we can target larger geometrical structures. The market then, we'll just blow this up. Again in Asia, we get our first hour. They put a peak formation in place, but they work the high, work the high. Stop hunt down low. Pin hammer at the after the stop hunt in the second hour of the Asian window. And again, we're in day two. Sorry, day three. We're in the uh, Wednesday. And we talk about level three trades sometimes will often blow off in the direction of the trend because we have technicals in line. Technicals are trending. Traders will trade with the technicals. We talk about markets taking you further up into the highs or further down into the lows if it's going down. But again, the equities hour, one, two, three, four, one, two, pin hammer, second candle of the equities hour. We get a one, two, three. So we have no middle structure yet in place. This is just a high of the day, but again, the pin hammer is in place, potentially for the high of the day. We have a pin hammer on the stop hunt to the low in Asia. Market goes into consolidation. And at this stage, again, we're looking as we head into the U.S. that potentially we have a high of the day in place. And we have potentially maybe a low of the day in place. But the market, again, ends up going down 50 pips from top to bottom to stop hunt traders who are long off the low. But but also it is congested inside of the two peak formations. So you'd want to be targeting at least 50 pips of space 
to take a trade like this. But again, the equities hour. The U.S. session, one, two, three, four, bear pin hammer. The last candle of the first hour, just prior to the equities hour. Bear pin hammer, stop on the low of the day, inside bar consolidation, pull back, hit the stops up top. So coming back to working backwards and deconstructing what's happening. Time of day is critical. What do you expect to see at the high of the day or the low of the day? Either engulfments with pin hammers or pins to the high, pins to the low. We're on level three, day three. So again, we've talked about day one, day two, day three. The market has tightened its range up. The next day we go into peak formation in Asia in the first hour as we head into the uh, end of the first hour. The market in the equities hour then goes back down 25 pips for pulling back in that three hour window. And what do we have at the beginning of the Europe session? A pin hammer for a 50 pip move down. So in this particular case, we can see one, two, three, four. We had a pin hammer, then one, two, three, four. A bull pin doji hammer for the continuation down. So people say, well, what about the bear pin hammer here? This is a really important concept to understand. When London opens and they give us three candles down and, and there's a bear pin hammer on the third candle of the hour, that potentially may be our low of the day setting up. They work the low, bull pin doji, come back, hit it a second time, and then move away. We get a bear pin hammer. One more test on traders that get it right for a 50 plus move back up. And that was actually 100 pips almost back up to the high of the day. Point being timings. That's a three hour window. They put the pin in place in the equities hour. Then they hit the low again a second time, engulfed it, retested it, and then shifted it away. One more test with the bear pin hammer for the 75 plus pip move back up. Pin hammers on the bottom, pin hammers on the top. You could get an engulfment potentially. And again, just noticing the Asian range. This is obviously not going to be the higher low of the day. It's a consolidation going sideways. This possibly could have been the high of the day. We had it locked in, but the market put a peak formation in place in Asia. 25 pip consolidation. Extended that move down 25 to 50 pips. Pulled it back, hit it a second time engulfment. One more hit to the low, one push, two push, three pushes, pin hammer for a 75 pip move back up to the high of the week. So just deconstructing everything based on live time, time of day, price action, round numbers, one bar stops, asymmetrical risk reward. And even if you wanted to do Geometry, you can take the high and low of that range. The market breaks out, does four full expansions of that range. If we were targeting just the high of the day or even the high of the Europe London window, you can see that market didn't quite get up there. But in terms of number levels, we have 50 pips. So we're targeting 50 plus. That market followed up through the 50 level for 75 or more, depending on where traders set their standard. But also the high of the week was up there as well. The market pulls back and goes into consolidation for a gain, working the high of the day and the high of the week. Really important. First hour is a stop hunt to the high. We have a middle structure possibly in place. Fourth candle of the hour, first hour, a pin hammer after the engulfment and the consolidation sideways. Stop hunt to the low of the day. One, two, three. Pull it back. Hit it a second time. Traders may have wanted to go long there, thinking this engulfment pin hammer may have been a trade. But if that was the case, as soon as we saw the bear pin hammer, if traders were long off of this second leg structure, if they thought that was a, a buy signal, when we see the bear pin hammer print, that's an automatic exit sign because we know this is a short setup for the move back down through the low of the day. The original trade was up top, selling high, 
hit the low, hit the low, pull it back one push, two push, three pushes, bear pin hammer. That's the move back down to the low of the day. Second hit to the low, engulfment, retest, bear pin hammer, one push, two push, three pushes for the stop hunt back up through the high of the day. Timings, that middle hour is critical. In this particular case, again, remember the stop, the original trade was up top for the move back down. Now we're inside of the window in between. They go into the next 12 candle window. We get our bear pin hammer to give us our first leg. We get an engulfment on the second leg, then a retest on traders that are long without taking out the lows, bear pin hammer for a 50 pip stop hunt back up. Now again, this is an example of where traders might have been holding on for more than 50 pips, but that market has now completed its job and gone into consolidation. This is an example of where if that had been the case, I would be out of this trade and just lock in whatever was, was left. Next day, okay, again, geometry. We have a high of the day and a low of the day. The market puts a peak formation in place in Asia before breaking through. So now we have geometry. We have a descending triangle. Take a measurement of that distance for the move down possibly. And again, this market uh, bullpen hammer, first candle of the, or sorry, the last candle of the first hour in a downward market with a peak formation already in place. Stop on high, engulfment pin hammer. 25 pip nail and bail trade to the low of the day goes into consolidation with pins on the bottom clear sign to exit that trade but again traders going long here one push two push and then a one two three you want to be exiting that trade because we're setting up now for the m structure at the high of the london session day for the move back down through the low of the day one push, two push, one, two, three. In M structure, 50 pip stop on to the low of the day. But again, just pay attention to the equities hour. First hour, end of the first hour, bear pin, bull pin hammer. One, two, three engulfment, bull pin hammer, but we're already in an M structure. But that equities hour is a stop hunt to the low of the day. Next day we go into consolidation. We'll just clean this up. Next day we go into consolidation and again we're in a market that has been moving strongly. We have our consolidation in Asia. We put a peak formation in place. The market gives us our M structure for a move down. First candle of the 12 candle window we get a bear pin hammer for the stop onto the low of the day. Pulls back. The, the equities hour, the second candle of the equities hour is a bear pin hammer. Potentially may now be giving us a low of the day setup. We have our bear pin to continue the move. We now have a bear pin down low for potentially locking in a low of the day. That's a stop hunt on traders who were long on the W on the Friday. Market pulls back. Hits traders at break who are at break even again, pulls it back, hits traders who are short before hitting it a second time and then shifting away. One push, two push, three pushes to the high. Hit the low one more time, engulfment, pin, hammer to pull away and move back up towards the high of Monday, which is also now the high of the week. So again, we talked about day one, day two, day three. Day one has taken out Friday's U.S. session highs. Stop hunted back down. Tuesday goes into consolidation. Okay, in our equities hour, we have a one, two, three to the low of the day, but we're inside. We're inside the high and the low. We're not at the low or at the high. We're inside of the high and the low. This is a lot of cases a, a trap. One push, two push, three pushes, stop hunt to the low, hit it a second time. One, two, three, four. First candle of the equities hour is a bull pin hammer, hitting both the outside leg and the middle leg. 
This is a golden setup for me. Once we've hit the low, we've hit the low, we've hit the low, put our bullpen hammer in place. Not only would I be targeting a break of the middle structure, but also a break to the high of the day and possibly a measured move. But as we can see, the market pulled back and eventually exhausted up through the highs without breaking through any stronger. So again, number levels, we've got a 50 pip box and it's day two. So now we could be hypothesizing day one, day two, we're working the high, working the high. We have a compression pattern possibly building higher lows. We have higher highs, so we might be in a channel of sorts. Go back to our simple system. Timings, high a day, low a day. The market, we lock in our high of the day. The market gives us a low in Asia, pulls back, hits it again. Market pulls back, hits it a third time, goes into consolidation, bear pin hammer, bull pin hammer engulfment. Possible middle structure, the market breaks out and pulls back. One push, two push, three pushes, that's a squeeze. So we have middle structure, we have a high of the day, and we also have geometry. We have geometry for the day itself, and we have geometry for the previous day's high and the day's low. Next day we go into consolidation. Basically a 25 plus pip box. We have the same scenario, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're now in day four, but the market's been breaking to new highs. Haven't had quite a huge move yet, but we have a coiled up time compression fact, uh, scenario. The market works the high, works the high. This is an example again in Asia where I've talked about not having a peak formation, just trading sideways. So you know this is potentially the sort of day where Asia will be the middle of the range. The previous day, we possibly had a peak formation in place, but they reversed that. On a day like this, the Asian range is sideways within a 25 pip box. Typically, this is the sort of day where Asia will be the middle of the day. If that's the case, then London potentially may be the low or the high of the day. We get a 1, 2, 3, 4, and then a 1, 2, bear pin hammer at the low of the day, stop hunting traders, that are long at the bottom of that box at the timings second candle of the middle hour engulfment and one two three quick and fast goes into consolidation this two bar combination is a pin hammer and again now we're talking about measured moves that market continues up to do one full expansion of the previous day's range timings Peak formations, the equity hour, engulfments, and pin hammers. The more I just stick to this simple scenario, it keeps me out of garbage. It keeps me guessing. It keeps me chasing stuff. I draw my highs and lows, and I wait for the clock. The market puts a peak formation in place in Asia, works down Pulls back, hits the low a second time, engulfs it, goes sideways, engulfs again, breaks out in that first hour of the equities 12 candle window, sorry, the Europe London 12 candle window, one, two, three, four, and then we get the gift. One, two, second candle, London, engulfment after a stop on into traders who are long. After the breakout, consolidation on top of the previous day's trading range on a fourth trading day we're targeting not only a measured move of this range but the full expansion from the previous day's breakout so in this particular case you can see we did three full expansions of that range but most importantly it's equities hour pin hammer engulfment the market breaks out goes into consolidation pin hammer breaks through the high of the day 
consolidation. One, two, three, pin hammer. Another pin hammer. One, two, three pin hammers in the long direction after we've taken out the peak formation in Asia. Do not counter trend the peak formation. The peak formation is now long. The low is potentially locked in for the day with our type 2 W structure at the low of the day. Do not counter trend the peak formation. Peak formation long, peak formation long. The market continues to move. 1, 2 inside bar continuation. Equities hour inside bar breakout, uh, bear, uh, open drive breakout. 1, 2 inside bar 3 to the high. Another 100 pips. Sideways, bear pin hammer. Bear pin hammer for potentially the high of the day. Market drops down and goes into consolidation and closes from there. So again, just reiterating, high and low of the day. Structure for measured moves. Targeting possibly more than 50 pips. Understanding the timings and how long that trade has gone for, but also identifying potential trade entries based on these pin hammers and engulfments in that equities hour. If there's an existing trend in place, do not counter trend the peak formation. Very important because these are types of trades where traders will counter trend and get smashed the entire day. There is no evidence whatsoever in this leg of a counter trend move. Even at the high of the day, there is nothing there that's an engulfment or an indication of a short trade. Engulfment pin hammer. These are the scenarios where traders can uh, multiply their profits significantly. This is just an example, but every single pair this week showed similar behavior. It doesn't matter. There's going to be similar trade setups in a sideways market. There's going to be similar trade setups in reversals, timings, high of the day, low of the day, pin hammers, engulfments, 25 and 50 pip stop hunts from highs and lows, pullbacks into existing profitable trades. I keep it simple. I look for the same things every single day at specific times at the highs and lows of the day. If I don't see that, I don't try and trade it. I'll look at other pairs that are cleaner going into the next session in the U.S., maybe a U.S. dollar pair, a euro pair. If the pound pairs are just ranging or messy, I'll go and look at the euro pairs. There's always something that gives a good, clean textbook setup. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Keep it simple. Timings are critical. Engulfments, pin hammers at the high or low of the day, 25 to 50 pips, sometimes 75. But the timings will tell you where you're at. Have a great trading session. Enjoy the weekend, and may the markets Hi, go. Hi, traders. Well. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.